Good morning, Grace Church. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It is the last Sunday in the Advent calendar, or not the Advent, the liturgical calendar, because next week will be the beginning of Advent, and we begin the countdown to the Christmas season. But today is Christ the King Sunday, where we celebrate that Christ reigns in heaven over all. Uh, and a reminder, then, of course, this week is Thanksgiving week, and uh, Thursday we will have a Thanksgiving Day service here at 10 a.m., so it's a little earlier than our Sunday services. So be sure to come around 10 a.m. for our service, and I believe we'll have our traditional table of plenty, thanks to Bob. And uh, we'll have a great uh, uh, Thanksgiving Day service on Thursday morning. Uh, Pat Knuster has an announcement. I'm not sure if Janice is here yet. Um, and maybe she wanted to say something about Thanksgiving um, baskets. The Thanksgiving um, uh, food pantry is going to be a little different, and I know that she invited you to bring uh, certain items. It was in the bulletin as well um, for those baskets. If you brought anything like that, great. Leave them in the church office, and we will use them for the baskets on, thir on this Tuesday. Four weeks later, we are going to do a similar sort of thing with uh, Christmas baskets. Not, not a feast this time, but some Christmas items that we will pass out um, at our food pantry. With that in mind, we thought, let's make it a little special by making, uh, making it really feel like Christmas with a few little Christmas gifts inserted into these um, bags. Don't want this to be a costly thing for anyone, but I started realizing that around my house I have some kind of cool little items that would make a kind of nice gift, like a candle that I'll probably never use, a Christmas mug, just some ideas of things that you might think, oh, I already have this, I could supply this. Oh, look, a puzzle completely unopened. So if you have little items like this or would like to purchase small items like a small bottle of lotion um, would be appreciated or, or body wash or, or something like that. No, nothing big, um, but something that we could just insert. We will wrap these then just to make our Christmas baskets all that much more special. And you can leave any items that you have unwrapped. We'll take care of the wrapping in the church office in the, sometime in the next three Sundays. Thanks so much. Are there any other announcements? People of God, please rise for our call to worship in body or in spirit. Christ Jesus, friend of the poor, the meek, and the merciful, now reigns above all authority and power in this world and in the world to come. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. God has placed everything under Christ's feet, crowning the one who bore the thorns as the head of the church, his body. We enter God's gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. Let's begin our worship on this Christ to the King Sunday by singing, Crown Him with Many Crowns. <clears throat> Let's sing. Crown Him with many crowns. The Side. 
this morning in the house of our Lord to praise our good God and bring glory to his name. As we gather to worship God, we are welcomed and greeted by our God of love. Grace, peace, and love be given to you this morning from God our Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As God welcomes and greets us this morning, we want to take time to pass the peace and the love of Christ to all of those here with us today. Give my Kelsey hug. As we return to our seats, we're going to um, get ready to sing a fairly new song we sung before, but this is really a song of uh, just praise and worship. And I hope this can be a time that we, we celebrate and worship together. And just, even if you don't know the song, you can listen and start to sing along eventually. But just prepare your hearts for worship on this song, Holy Forever. And if you've been forgiven 
sings on forever to the Lamb. And if you walk in freedom, and if you bear his name, sing the song forever to the Lamb. We'll sing the song forever and amen, and the angels cry. Oh, presence of a holy God, we can't help but feel our own shame and need to confess. Hear this call to confession. We come to God because we know we've made mistakes. We haven't always followed Jesus as we should. Let us humbly come to God asking for forgiveness and help to live as we are called to live. Join me in this prayer of confession. Jesus, we say that you are our king, but we don't always live like it. We sometimes choose other things, friends, money, our own way over following you. Please forgive us. Help us to remember that you are Lord over everything. Teach us to follow you with our whole hearts. We pray this in your name, Jesus our King, amen. Please rise in body and spirit for this assurance of pardon. People of God, because Jesus died and rose again, God has forgiven us. God has brought us out of darkness and into Christ's kingdom. In Jesus, we have forgiveness and new life. 
let us live with joy, knowing that we are loved and forgiven. Amen. Amen. With grateful hearts for that assurance, let's sing together. Great is thy faithfulness. for our congregational prayer, we'll be doing it open mic style. So we will be hearing from each other things that are on our hearts or on our minds, either of praise to God or things that are weighing on us that we want to join together in prayer for. So I'll bring the mic, Rachel will bring the mic, and if you have something to say, please bring it forward. And then afterward, that will be like our prayer that we pray together, and as a group, we'll say, Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayer. Good morning, Tammy Baker here. I just want to say, you know, just keep me and my family in your prayers, and you guys have a nice holiday. Marcia and I and the Canoosters celebrate 52 years of marriage today. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayer. One walk over, pray for people on the street, you have nice, nice fest demonstrating the people on the street. And Wednesday, my brother, it'll be here. My father, he'll be in Grand Rapids. 
Wednesday morning and spend time with my cousin's house, my cousin. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayer. Good morning, my name is David. I just want to lift up the hearts of the body of Christ because in these last days, things are getting very hard. And as the body of Christ, we're supposed to shine as the light and we're supposed to be the salt of the earth. And we need to open up our mouth and tell what God has done for us. So people that are lost might have a chance to come into the light as we are in the light. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayer. I want to also um, together think of the people who are grieving. We're coming into the holidays and either for people who will not be at the holidays or just people enduring really you know, hard times. Um, we think of members of our body, too, who have lost people in this past year. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayer. Hi, this is uh, John Helder. Um, I had the opportunity to speak with Emily uh, Romero this week, and, um, and I, there's an opportunity to interact with them this week um, uh, for coffee. But um, specifically, we chatted about um, the we don't really maybe hear as much about it, but and it's in your announcements, but the um, tropical storm that went through is Tropical Storm Sarah. Uh, and it was very, um, very, um, it's like three straight days of rain. Uh, and um, luckily uh, the school and whatnot and Tegucigalpa in general was in pretty good shape, but the like rural areas are really, really hard hit. And it's like a very, um, like in agricultural areas, um, they, really center around those rivers, a lot of cities and whatnot, and it's really, really hard. So we, if we keep them in our prayers. Good morning, um, Janice Cole. Um, I just wanted to share, yesterday Marcus and I went um, to a very dear friend of ours um, house, a house who is now in um, hospice care at home. Um, came on pretty quickly. Um, she's very strong and um, faithful in God. And um, it was just such a blessing um, to see the um, calmness and faithfulness that she is still maintaining uh, while being um, surrounded by family and friends and knowing that um, she will be um, transitioning um, probably relatively soon. And um, the song that we just sang, Great Is Thy Faithfulness, um, that's one of my favorite songs. It was one of my mom's favorite songs. And um, I think it's a good tribute to our friend. Thank you. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayer. Hi, this is Ryan. Um, I walked in late, so maybe there was an announcement to this effect, but um, I and a few other grace ministers are uh, likely going to become RCA ministers on February 18. So that is happening a lot faster than we thought. And as Sarah and I um, kind of re reviewed the process and looked over the paperwork, we were uh, hit with some grief um, since the Christian Reformed Church has been our community for so long. Um, so I, I pray that God's blessing be upon all these things and that the Lord's hand is in it. And also for the unity of uh, Grace Church, I, I have excitement too for what comes next for our church. So uh, pray that the Lord is in all these things. Yeah, to sort of add on to that, I think just prayer for our church and for... Um, the churches in our community who are making decisions and transitioning. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayer. Well, let's, oh, we have one more, I think. I don't want to do this. 
Hey, Ari, how many years was that anniversary? 52? So you got married when you were 10? <laughs> He's my buddy. Um, I wanted to share something this morning that has been on my heart for the last 12 years. I uh, got that RSV virus um, a little over a week ago. And if you believe in vaccinations, I, I guess you need to get that because it just knocked me off my feet and uh, didn't work all last week. So I went from that low, and I was praying last night, early last night, um, and the love of my life that I lost 12 years ago, we haven't talked in 12 years, and from the encouragement of a friend here at church, write a letter, just you know, send a letter and see if she'd be willing to text or talk on the phone. And so I just, not knowing for sure if she still had the same cell phone number, I sent a text and kind of left the door open, you know, would, would you like to text or talk, like to find out what you're up to and everything. And within 15 minutes, I got a phone call and we talked for 45 minutes. And now we're going to get together at my daughter's house. And uh, so I want to thank the Lord for answering prayers. He's not always, doesn't do it overnight, but the timing couldn't have been more perfect. So I went from the low last week to the high and uh, really re-energized me in my belief and in prayer. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayer. We're going to close our time of prayer with the Lord's Prayer all together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Kids, join me in the front, please, for our time of worship. Hi, Wells. Hi, Ezra. Hi, David. Hi, Marty. Hi, Louise. Okay. Couple more coming. All right, are you ready for our blessing? Okay, and to give our blessing, the Lord be with you and also with whoops, you. Good job. Okay, you can walk upstairs, okay? The Lord be with you, and also with you, the Lord of heaven and earth, be worshipped in this place, the covenant of grace, be renewed, the Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. At this point in the service, we have the opportunity to respond to the gospel with our offerings. Uh, we're going to pass two baskets. Our first offering today is for the Grace Church General Fund, which is the green-handled basket, and that uh, funds all the various ministries that Grace does in our neighborhood. Our second offering is specifically for the Christian Education Assistance Fund, and that'll be the red-handled basket. Today's second offering is for the Christian Education Assistance Fund. Grace Church is committed to helping with tuition costs for those families sending their children to Christian schools. 
We've had families attend Grand Rapids Christian Schools, Living Stones, Catholic Central, Potter's House, South Christian, and Northview. Grace believes a Christ-centered education prepares students to be effective servants of Christ and equips them to serve society to their fullest potential. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you today to ask for your help. Help us raise our children in your ways. Guide them and train them to know you and love you. Fill our children with wisdom and discernment. Above all else, fill them with your love. In your name we pray, amen. Our prayer for illumination. Holy Spirit, open our hearts to hear your word and shape our lives to follow it. Help us to listen with love and respond with courage. Amen. Our scripture is from Genesis 50, verses 15 to 21. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. I am in the place of God. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. We 
we have reached the end of our journey through the book of Genesis. I was struck with thoughts of different endings and beginnings, and periodically I will reread the Harry Potter series or dive into the movies. And while I love the books and the movies are meh, I often think back to like the friends I made along the way through that journey. Because I was that weird kid that made my mom take me to the store at midnight to go get the books. I made my whole family go see the movies at midnight. And before like, you could order movie tickets online, you had to like, go to the theater and buy your ticket. And I would make people, like, I couldn't drive at that time. So like, we have to go to the movie theater weeks and weeks in advance to go buy these tickets for my family of seven that I would then make stay up very late to go watch this movie that I would then proceed to complain about for the coming days because they didn't do it perfectly. But it was the friend we made along the way. And I remember vividly going to get the seventh book from the store and thinking, oh no, this is like the end. And I was so sad that we had reached that end. But it wasn't really the end because we had many more movies to come out, which was exciting. And I didn't know how much they could like really take that story and create it. So there's an amusement park and a TV show, and it really will never end. But I thought at that moment it was the end. As we finish the Genesis today, we're, we're to an end, but it's not an end. It's just the beginning. It's in the name, Genesis. The beginning of us learning who our God is that made us. The God who created the world, we read in the beginning of Genesis, and said that it was good. And then created us, people, and said it was very good. A God that called to Abram and Sarai and told them to leave their home, to leave behind their gods, and to follow him. To trust him, that he would make them a great nation. They were old, they had no children, this seemed impossible, and yet they followed God and trusted stepping into the unknown. So it's weird in a lot of ways because we covered a lot of ground and not a lot of time. Today we meet Joseph in a lot of ways. And Joseph is a good place to end, I think, because it ends the book with Joseph on its own. But I think also because of what Joseph ends with. We spent a lot of time with Abraham and Sarah. We spent a lot of time with Jacob. We waited for a long time for the birth of Isaac, the promised child. The book ends with Joseph, but the book isn't about really any of those people. This is a book about God. And Joseph, the ending of it really frames that on who God is. See, Joseph's life in a little short form was not perfect. It started off pretty great for him. He was the favorite child of his son. He had 11 brothers, he had a sister, and he was number one in his dad's eye because he was birthed by his dad's favorite wife. And so he was just so deeply loved by his father, not by his siblings. So there was some tension there. His father made him a beautiful coat, and you could just see him walking around the house like, look at my coat. Look at the colors, look at the style. I look amazing. Do you have a coat? You don't have a coat like this. And he was maybe a little bit of a show-off. He had dreams, and he would tell his family about his dreams, and he interpreted them in one way. Part of what we skipped reading, which is really great, is his father, when he passes away, giving the blessing to all of the children. And if you have time to read it, he interprets Joseph's dreams a little bit differently than Joseph does, looking farther ahead than Joseph did. But Joseph interprets the dream as his brother is bowing down to him, him being the like, center of attention. He is the main character in his world. And his brothers hate him. They despise him, so they plan to kill him. A few brothers step in, they plan to save him, but things go awry, as they tend to do, and he gets sold off into slavery in Egypt. So things aren't great for Joseph, and while he's in Egypt, a woman accuses, accuses him of rape, so then he ends up in jail. Things are really not great for him. But while in jail, he gets more dreams, and he uses this gift that God gives him, and he interprets them, and he gets out of jail, 
and ends up being really important in Egypt. The dreams that God had given him told him that there will be seven years of famine and then seven years of prosperity, and he's able to get this information to those who can do something about it. And so while the land all around them is not prepared for the famine that comes, Egypt was. Egypt was able to store food so that when the famine comes, his family, who's still off in Canaan, hears that there is food in Egypt, and there's a beautiful family reunion. They come down, they weep, there's tears, they go and get their father, their whole family leaves Canaan and comes to live in Egypt. And they live there for such a long time that his father, their fa- his father passes away in Egypt. And they're able to take their father back and bury him in the family plot that was the first piece of land that Abraham bought to bury Sarah. And they take him back and they bury him, but they have to return to Egypt. And it's now that we read our text today. It's about, they've been in Egypt for probably around 20 years at this time. And now his brothers come and they're nervous. They're nervous about what is Joseph going to do? Our dad is dead. Was he just waiting for dad to die before he got his revenge? Would it be outside of their family norm? We read about the twin dynamic that exists before where Esau said, I will kill my brother once my father is dead. It didn't happen, but they would have known that story. And so it doesn't seem like this actually happened, that their father actually told them, make sure you tell Joseph to let go of his grudge. It seems like they're maybe stretching the truth to try to save their own backs. The thing that I want to point out is not their lie, not their stretching the truth to gain an upper ground with Joseph. It's Joseph's response. They've lived together in Egypt for decades. And now his brothers come to him saying, like, please don't hurt us, don't harm us. And he starts to cry. Because that is not on his mind at all. He's crying because he's sad. And so maybe, maybe sad too. Because he wasn't thinking of harming his brothers. Because his mindset had been so different from what his brothers were thinking. And he says, what you intended for evil, God intended for good. Now, this does not mean that Joseph loved everything that happened to him. It doesn't mean that when he was sold off into slavery, he's like, I'm sure God has a great thing happening here. It doesn't mean that when he was getting accused of rape, he was like, let's go. Keep accusing me of things. Like, add more on. I can take it because God is with me. It doesn't mean he was rejoicing in the harm that came his way. This meant he knew that trouble might come, but God would be there in the trouble. And God would be faithful through it all. We see that as we continue to read towards the very end of Genesis. Joseph they says that they live there until he passes away when he is quite old. He knows that he is about to die. He's about 110 years old, and he says, I am going to die. When I die, at some point, God is going to come and take us out of Egypt. That day is not now. At some point, God is going to come and hear our cry and bring us back home. When that day comes, bring my body back. Bring my body back home. He knows that God is faithful. He knows that God is faithful in his life, and so he's able to look at his life and see the tragedy, see the pain, and say, God is faithful to his word. So God is going to show up. And may not know when, but God will show up. And so when he's reunited with his family, when he was able to be there with his brothers as they said goodbye to their father, when they're able to bury their father back home, He says, this is a testament to God's faithfulness. So you intended all of these things for bad, but God did good. And he's able to look at his life as he's about to pass away. And he knows things aren't perfect. They're not in the land that God promised to give to them. They're living in a foreign place. 
And he says, God made these promises to us, so God will be faithful. And so one day, he doesn't know when, but he knows that one day it will happen. That one day God will come and bring them back. And so he speaks out in trust of God's faithfulness, saying, when that day comes, this is what you are to do. Now, for many of us, God's faithfulness, we heard it in the prayers today. It's something that we cling to. I was able to hear a kid speak this weekend who had been homeless for some time and now has his own apartment. And he spoke, and he, he had just gotten off of work, and he said, I want to get, like, basically, I want to keep this short and sweet because I'm tired. But he said, like, what comes your way? Troubles are going to come. But just keep going because God is good. He spoke of God's faithfulness to, in his life when there were years of uncertainty. He spoke that God had been faithful. It's God's faithfulness that we can cling to. It's God's faithfulness that we come back to time and time again through the book of Genesis. That life was not always easy for this family that followed God. Things did not happen in an instant. They heard promises, promises of children that would come. Decades later, the child comes. Promises of a land that would be given to them. We end the book, they're not in the land. But they don't give up hope. They don't say, what does God promise if we end here in Egypt? In fact, Egypt is the very last word in the book of Genesis. It lets us know that there's, there's more to come. It's pointing us further, saying God is still working. And that's the hope that we cling to because God is still working in our lives. God is still working here. I want to take a moment, we prayed about those who are grieving, and I want to take a moment to just highlight a family in our congregation who has been in the midst of grief for this last year, the Houseman family. It was on November 20th, which was last week, that Mitch got into the car accident. It was the week of Thanksgiving. It was like this week in many ways that he was in the hospital where they prayed and hoped and prayed. And Jill and Ron are still in, I mean, unimaginable grief and pain. Losing a child far too young. Two young children, a wife, a sister. There's deep pain and sorrow there. There's a lot of unanswered questions that we won't have answers to. Anger and lament. And yet we cling to God's faithfulness. We cling to the promise that this ending is not the final ending for Mitch, but there is hope and resurrection through Christ Jesus. We don't always know how, we don't know why, and in many ways we end some of our stories in the same way the book of Genesis ends, at a place of kind of discomfort. This is not where we want to be. We don't want to be in the grief. We don't want to be at the graveside. We want to be at Easter morning, at the empty tomb. We want to be with our resurrected Lord. We want to be in the faithfulness and the promises of God. But sometimes, like the people of Genesis, were in the waiting. And while we wait, we get to cling to God's faithfulness. While we are waiting, we have to trust the God that we know. And so we have to know God. We have to know that our God is good to trust our God. We have to be able to know that our God is a God who keeps his promises to know that we can turn the page of this book because the story is not yet over. We have to know that there is more yet to come. There was more yet to come for this family that is now a great nation that is growing. And it's all not good. It begins, the next book of the Bible begins with bloodshed and death and pain. 
and many of our lives, there is so much pain and sorrow, but that is not the end of the story. God promised long ago that he is going to come to restore all that has been broken. Next week, we enter into Advent, the time of waiting for Christ. But truly, we are always in an Advent type of spirit. We are always longing and waiting for the return of our Lord. Because our God promised that one day Christ will come back. That death will be no more. That all the pain and sin of this world will be a thing of the past. That there will be no more weeping and no more crying. That is a promise that we hold tight to. Because we serve a God who is faithful. We serve a God who keeps his promises. We serve a God who is still working. It's that God that we meet in Genesis. It's that God that meets us here today. Our good, loving God. Let us pray. God of love, you gave us this holy scripture so that we could know more about you about your world, and about how you care for your world and your people. God, we spent this last, these last several months reading through this book of Genesis, the first book of scripture that you gave us. God, we saw the heartbreak that people experience that we know too well as well. We saw their joys and their frustrations. And God, we saw your faithfulness. That we saw that you are a God who shows up time and time again. That you are a God who has a plan. That your plan is in action and that you are a God who is working. God, we thank you that you created this world and that you stayed an active part of this world. We thank you that you sent your son into this world, God. To live, to breathe, to save us. God, we thank you that you are still active and working today. Help us to see and feel your holy presence in our lives. Help us to trust in your holy word. Give us strength when we feel weak. Give us hope when we feel hopeless. God, help us to turn to you and to trust you. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. As we respond to that word, we rejoice for a great high priest whose name is love whoever lives and pleads for us. Please rise in body or in spirit and let's sing together before the throne of God above.
We serve a faithful God. We serve a God that goes with us into our lives to comfort us and to give us strength. And so as we prepare to leave here today, our God will send us with a blessing. Before you go, if you would like to spend time in prayer, an elder will be here at the communion table after the service and would be happy to pray with you. We also have a prayer box in the back that we pray through throughout the week. If you are worshiping online, you can try it type any prayer requests you have into the chat, and we will pray for those as well. Again, this is a special week. It's Thanksgiving week, and so we will gather here again to worship this Thursday at 10 a.m. if you are in town and would like to gather here to celebrate and give thanks to our good God. But as we go into this week, take this blessing from God with you today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face and shine down upon you. May God be gracious to you and give you the light of his presence and his peace now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Let's close our time together on this Christ the King Sunday by rejoicing and singing, You are crowned with many crowns. We'll see you on Thanksgiving morning at 10 a.m.